Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to develop film. And uh, there's already on Canvas a tutorial to show you how to load film on a plastic reel. Um, I use metal reels. I'm at home in my home dark room, so I have to make the video here because we're not supposed to uh, do demos while we're together in the lab because we need the social distance. So um, watch this video as many times as you need to so you know what to do when you have to come in and develop your film. Of course, I'm there to answer your questions. So this is called a stainless steel reel. You'll be using Patterson plastic reels, which are actually a little bit easier for beginners to load. This, time, uh, this kind uses eight ounces of chemicals, and the kind you'll be using uses 10 ounces of chemicals. So I've already um, pre-measured and, and poured all the chemicals we'll need for this, and I'm gonna run you through that uh, today so you know what to do. It, the most uh, crucial thing is that you have to get your film out of your film cassette and into this can in total darkness. So you either have to put everything into a black bag and then put your arms in that bag with it. It has a zipper within a zipper and then you, you um, do everything in the dark with your hands but you're in a light room or you go into a completely dark room to do this, okay? So uh, I've already done that. There is film in here. And uh, now the next and most important thing is to uh, prepare your developer. So I'm using XTAL developer. That's what we use at school. XTAL is the most environmentally friendly developer because it uses uh, vitamin C instead of hydroquinone, which is a really nasty chemical. So we try to use the greenest chemicals possible at Cerritos College. So in any event, uh, the, I need to get this developer down to 68 degrees. I say down to because my lab here is a little warm and it's summer. In winter time, I have to bring it up to 68 degrees. The way to do that is to fill up a bucket with some ice. And just put the beaker in the ice. And it will quickly come down to uh, 68 degrees. Don't buy an expensive thermometer in a photography store. Go to a cooking shop and get a cheap digital thermometer there. It does the job. Another thing you can do is, if it's too cold, is fill up a um, pot with some hot water. And then, or at school, you can use a tray. And then, quickly, the temperature will come up. So that's probably the part of the process that's going to take the most time when you're working in the dark room is getting the chemical at the right temperature. So there's four things that control contrast when developing a film. One is how hot the developer is. One is how diluted the developer is. The other is how much you agitate the developer. And I guess there's three things. <laughs> and um, so you want to get it down to one variable. Always agitate the same way. Always, always um, dilute the same way. So now you only have to think about um, how long you need it. That's, that's the, the other variables. So if all these other variables are the same, then you can change the contrast, which is sort of the dynamic range of the blacks and whites, by just controlling the timer. So if you want more contrast, so more blacks and whites, less grays, longer time. If you want less contrast, shorter time. So how do you know what time to start with? You can get an app for your phone from, um, it's called Digital Truth, the massive developing um, film developing chart. And otherwise, we have charts at school that you can look up the time. For this film, which is Ilford HP5, if my developer is stock solution, which means just a developer, which is what I'm using today, and I would set this at eight and a half minutes. However, um, let's see if that's working. Yes. If, um, if I were using 
one-to-one -one solution, which is what we use at school, it would, I think it would be 12 minutes. So you need to check, one-to-one -one means it would be half water and half developer. So five ounces and five ounces, or in my case, four ounces and four ounces. Okay. So as soon as I pour that developer in, I need to begin the process of counting. So pour it in like you are pouring a beer. Has anyone here ever poured a beer? What happens when you pour a beer? You get foamy head, right? We don't want bubbles. So, if you've never poured a beer, you'll have homework. Of course, if you are under 18, pour it for someone. Was it 21? If you're under 21, pour it for someone else, of course. Um, so, um, notice how I agitated. Agitate for the first 30 seconds of the development process. After that, you get a 30 second vacation, okay? And you can listen to music, music is great in the dark, all right, or whatever, change the song. Then agitate one time for five seconds every 30 seconds and give it a little tap. Because what happens when you give it a little tap if there's any bubbles on your film, the bubbles will alight. And if there's a bubble on your film, what's going to happen is it's not going to develop where that bubble is. Like I have a photograph of my grandfather I took next to his very cool Malibu Chevrolet. Uh, and there's this black dot right next to his head. And the reason there's a black dot there is because there was a bubble because I didn't give it a tap. Now you don't need to break the sink or break the tank. Just a little tap. So every 30 seconds I agitate for five seconds. And how you agitate can be quite entertaining. There are people who agitate like they're doing some kind of Tai Chi sequence. And there are other people who agitate like punk rockers. And then there are the the air dancer types, you know, so this will be really fun to watch others agitate. Okay, so now, basically, I have to wait until that comes to zero to pour out the developer and then pour in the next chemical, which I'll explain now, is the stop bath. The stop bath looks kind of yellow if it's indicator stop bath, and when it's no longer good, it will look purple. At Cerritos College, we just use a clear kind, which costs less, and so, uh, but it will be good, okay? Uh, that only needs to be in there for 15, 20, 30 seconds. It is important to use it, though. The uh, next thing is going to be the uh, hypo. Which one's my hypo? This is my hypo. And uh, hypo means fixer. It's, it's, uh, hypo is short for hypothiosodium sulfide, which is kind of a fancy salt. And was the last sort of secret in the, the invention of photography that it took them many years to figure out. Everything else was figured out except for that. So it kind of delayed the invention of photography until uh, Sir John Herschel discovered fixer. And then um, after the fixture, we have a brief a moment with water. And then we have um, one minute of water, pour the water out, and then we have two minutes in the hypo clearing agent. And we wash it for five minutes, and then we run it through the photo flow so there's no bubbles. Okay, I'll explain that when we get to that part of the process. Uh, that's all you need. Yeah, at Cerritos, sadly, we do not have hundreds of beakers. So you will be checked out one beaker. So you're going to have to wash out your first beaker during one of your 30 second vacations here and get the stop bath ready for the next one. Okay? Okay, so one more time agitating. Remember, agitation is one of the variables for contrast. 
Also, the temperature should be at 68 degrees. Uh, how long you leave it in, the development time, and agitation. Um, did I say agitation already? Yes. Uh, dilution is the fourth one. How diluted it is. So make sure it's not over diluted or under diluted. So when my timer gets to zero exactly at that time, unless I want to expand the contrast, I just pour out the developer. We do not recycle the developer. Can recycle the developer if it's a stock solution, but then it's kind of a guessing game how long to develop it next time, and we don't want to have a guessing game. And fortunately, the developer is is okay to pour down the drink because it has vitamin C instead of hydroquinone in it. Okay, then it wouldn't be really all that. Okay. Now, uh, I have the stop bath in now, so I'll just agitate constantly with the stop bath. The stop bath stops the development. Basically, it's an acetic acid solution, okay? If you do pour your own stop bath at home, if you mix it yourself, be careful to first pour the water and add the acid to it. Don't uh, add water to acid because it can be very dangerous to do that. So, A, 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 add acid after. Now comes the fixer. There are many different kinds of fixer. I'm using a pretty standard eco fixer from Arista. Um, if I wanted to get this done in 30 to seconds to one minute, I could use a rapid fixer, okay? But I would have to pay a lot of money for that rapid fixer. And not only that, but um, it, it smells. It has a very, uh, it leaves a, especially if you're not wearing gloves, it will stay with your skin. So um, I recommend wearing gloves, powderless gloves, because powders are a conundrum in the dark room. Dust is our enemy, okay? So um, here, I need to do it exactly like I did the developer, 35 seconds every 30 seconds. You know, it's not very crucial. If I miss a beat here, no big deal, okay? Uh, it's just good to get into a rhythm, okay? Because again, if there's a bubble there, that part of the film's not gonna get fixed and you're going to end up with um, some special effects that you don't want, all right? So, um, you saw me pour the stop bath back into the jug, and um, we use these darkened containers for our chemicals because they are sensitive to light. Okay, so you may be thinking, well, how long do I know how to fix? Generally speaking, at Cerritos College, I recommend that you fix for eight minutes because we use a relatively weak fixer. Here at home, I, I'm using um, some pretty strong fixer, so I'm fixing for five minutes. If I have a fresh fixer, I can go even less. Okay. Um, but, like I said, it depends on the type of fixer you're using. When you get to the end of the process of fixing, recycle the fixer. We will be using the fixer from school in the print dark room. Okay, so we can get more out of it that way. So at this point, technically, you could open up the reel and take a look, but then it might be a little bit hard to get the film back on the reel. So we're going to wash it first. So, for brevity's sake, I'll just get the water in and out there and normally just go for about one minute. And now I'm pouring in some fresh hypo clearing agent. This is a brand I'm using, it's called Hypo Perma Wash, which is a very good one. And I'm going to recommend agitating for two minutes. 
and um, basically what happens here is you're reducing the wash time from one and a half hours to five minutes. So we live in California. There's not a lot of water. It's coming from Shasta. It's coming from the Owens River. It's coming from the Colorado River. And so we don't want to use any more than we need to. So this is a saving us thousands of gallons of water. All right? And it's a not really a harmful chemical. You can pour it right down the sink afterwards. Or you can recycle it. But the tricky thing is you don't really know when it's exhausted. So at school we will be recycling. So um, when I get done with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my film for five minutes. And then after that, I'm going to take the film out and have a look and, and run it through the photo flow solution. The photo flow solution is like fancy dishwashing liquid. It, it makes great bubbles. I remember when I was in high school, some of the photo students used to go down to the fountains on the Santa Monica Mall and pour in photo flow and make these uh, <laughs> giant soap sculptures. I'm not recommending that, of course. Um, okay, so when we're done with the hydro clearing agent, pour it out. And. This is about the right intensity of water. You don't need to blast it, okay? I'm using five gallons per minute here. So, But at school, you're going to have to dry these off yourself. So we have uh, towels and a hair dryer uh, near the film checkout uh, or equipment checkout room where you can dry these off. And the reason for that is with the plastic reels, if they're not 100% dry, when the next person uses them, then the film is going to stick when you try to load it. Someone's going to be stuck in a dark room and they're going to be like not, not able to get their film in the reel and you're going to start hearing noises in that room and the frustration is going to be very serious so um, don't let that be you and instead try the reel for the next person it's sort of like wearing a mask okay let's take a break hi there so um, we're almost done with the, uh, the washing of the film. I just wanted to point out that uh, point out the obvious. I'm wearing an apron here. You don't have to do that, but uh, generally the the chemicals are not harmful for your clothes. But the fixer could be a little bit of a problem. So um, I do recommend wearing an apron of some sort, or just be careful. Okay. So. Now that we're done washing, we can we can uh, take the film out. If you're using a Patterson reel, like at school, we also have these at school, then you need to um, twist it open, and then you, the film will easily come out. This you you simply pull it out, and now you can see the picture is nice. So, um, looks like this came out pretty good. If your film is completely blank, but you see numbers, what that means is that you didn't load your film properly, and your film just kind of stood there, and you photographed one picture on top of the other, okay? If you see a blank film and no numbers, that means you put the chemicals in, in the wrong order, 
if you see numbers and pictures, you loaded your film correctly. If your negatives are really, really dark, that means either you have a problem with your shutter speed in your camera or you're not using the meter properly and you overexpose. And if the numbers are very thin, again, it might be a problem with your camera or you, um, you're not using the meter properly and you're underexposed. So when we get to the stage of the process, we're ready to hang it up and run through the photo code and then let it hang up and dry. Typically, I will put a little clothespin on top and a little clip on the bottom. It doesn't really matter which one is top or bottom. And then you simply run it through the photo flow. Some teachers will teach you to leave it on the reel and dunk the reel in the photo flow and shake it up. Bad idea, because that will create bubbles. Remember, bubbles are not our friend. Uh, another bad idea is to use a squeegee. Scratches. Okay. So here, the only problem is, is if you're a very short person, then this kind of um, angle might be a little hard to reproduce. But the longer you can hold it like this and let it drip off, the quicker it will dry. And now you simply hang it up. I bought a gown bag, you can see over here, from the container store. This is not a commercial, and it's for free. And, um, so instead of buying a like $500 film dryer in a, a photography store, buy a $15 gown bag and hang it up to dry and zip it up. Three hours later, it will be dry. Or you can use the fans in our expensive RK dryers at school and they'll be dry in 20 to 30 minutes, okay? But best is to just let it kind of dry peacefully and calmly and then less dust will settle on the film. Right now the film is easy to be scratched so we want to be very careful putting it away. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any questions whatsoever please send me an email.